What I want to do is just uh, quickly walk through a basic slide about what we're going to be going through today. Um, sort of walk through, you know, everything that we're going to be setting up and then uh, we'll jump right into it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple woodpecker template uh, out of a simple certificate of incorporation. Uh, we're going to save that template to the woodpecker document collection. We're then going to build a simple Google form that matches the uh, questions or the, the fields that are in that certificate of incorporation such that we could share that form, say, with, our, with a client. Um, then we're going to get our API key from within Woodpecker itself. I'll show you where we can do that just in the settings page. Then we're going to build a zap to connect the Google form that we built to Woodpecker um, and ultimately to Google Drive. So essentially what will happen is we'll be able to fill out a client intake form that we've generated through Google Forms. Uh, pass all of that client data to Woodpecker. And then once the certificate of incorporation is prepared using that client data, it's going to store that certificate of incorporation in Google Drive. Now, um, this is obviously just a basic example of how you could use Zapier alongside Woodpecker. E each of these, this Google Drive piece at the end and Google Forms at the beginning, those could be anything that you wanted them to be. Um, this could be net documents or Dropbox or whatever. This could be any form um, library of your choosing, SurveyMonkey, JotForm, TypeForm, whatever. Um, and even then, you could layer on additional things onto the end of this or the beginning. Um, this is really just meant as a sort of uh, intro to Zapier and, and how Zapier works and actually how easy it is to, to set stuff up. Um, so again, feel free as you have questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat or just go ahead and raise your hand and I'll, I'll unmute you there and you can uh, just ask the question that way. Okay, so. Let's pop over to um, the simple certificate of incorporation that I, uh, that I have open here. And again, I put a link to this in the Zoom chat. So if you wanted to follow along with, um, with this, uh, this document here at the same time, feel free to just download it using that link. What we're gonna do, um, if you, you know, this is gonna be a little bit remedial for folks that have seen our demo, um, but basically whenever we start with a uh, simple document, in this case, a certificate of incorporation, we want to turn it into a Woodpecker template. And the quickest way to do that is to open it up in Word, launch Woodpecker alongside it via this little Woodpecker automation button here. And then we're gonna click initialize auto template. So what auto template does is basically analyzes the document for terminology that Woodpecker thinks might change uh, or, or terminology that lends itself to being turned into a, a Woodpecker field or, or a variable, all sort of synonymous here. Um, so what we're going to get is, is a list of obviously suggestions here. And again, if you've seen our demo, um, this is, we cover this more in depth there. Um, so I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little bit with the assumption that folks have already seen some of that uh, content. Um, so what I'll do is just reject the ones that I don't want which is this, these first four, the rest of these I put in brackets, I do want those. So I'm gonna reject the ones I don't want, keep the suggestions that I do, and I'll go ahead and click create these fields. And while we're waiting for this to run, um, basically I'll just explain that what we're gonna end up with is a basic form over here on the right that corresponds to our certificate of incorporation. And what we're interested in here obviously is creating a template as quickly as possible, saving it to our document collection, and then ultimately, once a template is in our document collection, we can populate it from Zapier. Okay, so now that uh, we've basically created a, a simple template here, a simple form, what we wanna do is, like I said, save it to the document collection. So one way to do that is just to go to the menu, go to the collection, and actually click a, the uh, add document button. The other way, which is a sort of shorthand here, is just click this little floppy disk icon uh, which allows you to save the current document to your collection. So if we save this current document to the collection, I already have this template in my collection. So it's just asking me if I would like to overwrite the existing one or keep them separate. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite them. So now this certificate of incorporation is saved to my document collection. Pretty simple. Um, if anyone has any questions about what we've done so far, again, please feel free to put that in the chat or either or raise your hand. But basically all we've done is used the auto template uh, feature set to convert this document to a template really quickly. And then we've saved this template to, um, to our document collection, which basically is just a sort of a DMS light uh, that is, acts as a shared drive and, and storage facility for your um, Woodpecker templates. So now that we've done that, 
let's pop over to the, uh, to the Zapier world. So what we're gonna do first um, is we want to actually create a Google form uh, that corresponds to the template that we just created. So to get to Google Forms, basically it's just, uh, let's see, it's forms.google.com, which is going to take you to uh, basically Google Docs, but in the, the Forms page for it. So it's, it's pretty easy to get to. And you can see a couple of uh, forms that I've created previously, but uh, we're gonna start from scratch. And again, for this example, we're using Google Forms, but you could use any form software that you like, whether it's Typeform, SurveyMonkey, JotForm, whatever, whatever you want. Um, Google Forms is just nice because it's free uh, and it's pretty easy to set up. So in this case, let's call this, uh, let's call this form here. Let's give it a name and call it uh, Certificate of Incorporation. And then we'll give the same name to the form. You can see that it automatically adjusts. And then what I wanna do is just start adding some questions that correspond to the questions that we created in our Woodpecker template. So if I just quickly pop back over here, we can see that there's company name, address, city, and county. So I'm just gonna quickly create a company name field. And you can see that Google uh, automatically adjusts uh, the uh, question type based on what you've entered in, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, so let's, uh, you know, here's company name. It automatically is adjusted to short answer, which we could change to any of these different question types that we wanted to. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. So we'll call this company address now. And let's just take another quick look. So we've got address, city, county, zip. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these here. We'll do company address, city, county, and zip code. And you can see that uh, it actually adds a validation uh, automatically, meaning that uh, it's validating that this is a number because it recognized that I input zip code. Um, so that's just kind of some nice uh, free features of, of Google Forms. Now, the next we have is total number of shares, par value and execution date. So these three, these, these um, fields might be things that I want to include after the fact. So these might be uh, values that I don't necessarily know uh, when, some, when a client is filling out my client intake form. And so what I wanna have happen is I want the certificate of incorporation to be generated with as much of the client data as possible, but I wanna leave these three fields blank such that when this document is generated, I can actually go in and fill these out right before I send it out. Because um, maybe, for example, this certificate of incorporation is generated on the first, but maybe our execution date is the fifth. So again, I'm going to leave these fields blank, meaning I'm not going to create any corresponding fields in the actual Google form. So with that, um, that's, this, is, it's a this is pretty simple, right? Um, we could also make each one of these required, which is probably something we want to do here. So I'll just go ahead and do that really quick. Again, if you have any questions about what uh, I've done thus far, please feel free to uh, post those in the chat and, um, and happy to go through them. I know we're kind of throwing a lot uh, at you here. So this is now a basic certificate of incorporation form. Um, and the second piece, which is really important when you're building a Google form specifically, is that the, the submission data for this form needs somewhere to go. So if we go over to the responses tab here, it's basically going to ask us, um, okay, well, where would you like to store these responses? And in this case, with a Google form, what you're gonna to wanna to do is create a spreadsheet or a Google sheet that ultimately stores the responses to this form. So if we click on this create a spreadsheet button here, it's going to allow us to create a new spreadsheet or selecting an existing one. So I'm just gonna uh, create a new one here and I'll click create. And at this point, what, what, what Google is going to do is create a certificate of incorporation spreadsheet for me that has all of the fields that I've just specified in, in that form that I've created. Now, whenever this form is submitted, these fields are going to get filled with, um, with that data, right? So this is, sort of, this is sort of your database for the data that is submitted via the client or the, um, the intake form. So let's just quickly give it a try so we can see what it looks like in action. The, um, the quickest way to do that is there's a little uh, eye icon up here that's, uh, if you hover over it, it says preview. So if we click on preview, it's gonna allow us to preview this certificate of incorporation. So let's just say I wanna do, you know, Acme Inc. And let's just do some, some dummy data here. 
and maybe there's my zip and that's it. I'm going to submit the form and what we should see is that my response has been recorded and now in this spreadsheet you can see that here's that data that was just submitted via the form. So pretty simple. Um, basically just the way to think about it is that this, this spreadsheet or this Google sheet exists as a storage mechanism for the Google form that we just created. Now what we're going to do is when we come into the Zapier realm, we're going to tell Zapier, listen for a new row. Whenever a new row is created in this spreadsheet, then go and run our Zap or run our workflow and pass this data to Woodpecker in an automated fashion and generate our certificate of incorporation automatically with this data. Any questions on that? Again, feel free to post those in the chat. I'm happy to, uh, happy to walk through it with folks. Okay. So now that our, uh, our, our basic uh, questionnaire is done, um, what we can do is obviously we've set up a, a basic storage mechanism for that data. Um, when we go over to send here, this is ultimately when we would, when, when we would share this, this form. So if we were to click on send, we can actually send this to someone via email. We can actually get a link uh, that we could share with a client or even better, we could embed this onto our website, right? So, so at any time, um, someone needed to, you know, needed to contact us or with a new client, we could forward them to a page on our website and they could fill out this form and then that set of documents would be generated for them. Okay, so now that we've created the form, what we want to do is the second piece obviously is, is connecting this Google form to Woodpecker. So to do that, we're going to get into Zapier now. So to, um, to get into the Woodpecker Zapier app, what we're first going to do is go to the Woodpecker Help Center, which is just help.woodpeckerweb.com. You can also access this from our website, uh, which is again, just woodpeckerweb.com. And there's a little help, uh, help center icon in the top. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look for Zapier. We're going to look for an article that has Zapier in the name. And um, what, we're, what we're looking for is, uh, let's see, using Woodpecker with Zapier, this, this article here. So if we click on this article, there's going to be a little bit about Zapier and a little sort of getting started video. Um, and then down here, this button is what we're looking for. So the reason that we're looking for this button is because Woodpecker's Zapier app um, is actually invite only. So in order to accept that invite, you basically just need to find this button and, uh, and go ahead and click it. And what this is going to do is obviously launch Zapier here. And it's going to say you've been invited to use Woodpecker on Zapier. You were invited by me. Uh, and so at this point, you would just click accept invite and build the zap. So we're going to click that button. And now we're going to get dumped into Zapier here. So you can see I've got a bunch of folders here with various, uh, various zaps. Um, and again, a zap is just a, uh, a workflow, uh, sort of an automated workflow. Zap is just the name that Zapier gives these things. So what we want to do is create a zap is the first thing here. So if we click on create a zap, basically this is going to allow us to specify a, what we call a trigger uh, and then ultimately subsequent actions. So basically the way that they lay it out is when this happens or when something happens, in this case, this is going to be when our Google form is submitted, then do this, right? And that do this is going to be populate a document via Woodpecker. Uh, we could chain on as many of these do this is as we wanted to, um, but the way, the, the way to understand this and what's important to understand about a zap, right, which again, is just a, an automated workflow, is that there is a, there's a first step, which is a when this happens step. And then there's as many of these do this after the fact steps after that. Um, again, if you have any questions about what we're going through or if I'm going too fast, um, feel free to, uh, to mention that in, um, in Zoom. There's also some controls in Zoom where you can um, non-verbally indicate if I'm going too fast or too slow. Um, so feel free to use those as well if you like. So what, um, what we want to do though is the first step is obviously we want to plug into our Google form. So what I'm going to do is look for uh, the, the Google form app uh, that's plugged into Zapier. So I'm just going to search for Google and we'll see all of uh, the apps that Google has made available uh, via Zapier. So if I choose the Google Forms option here, I'm going to select a trigger event. So a trigger event, uh, in this case, there's only two options. So it's basically a new response in a spreadsheet or a new or updated response in a spreadsheet. We just want the new response in spreadsheet. And remember, the reason it says spreadsheet is because ultimately the form data is getting stored in uh, this Google Sheet for us. 
So what, like I said earlier, what we're telling Zapier to do is look for any time there's a new entry in this spreadsheet, which basically means there was a new form submission, and then kick off this Zap, or this workflow um, accordingly. <clears throat> so our trigger event is going to be new response in spreadsheet. We'll go ahead and click continue. <clears throat> and at this point, if this is your first time using Zapier or even your first time using um, the Google Forms app within Zapier, it's going to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to prompt you to select your Google account um, or connect your Google account to, uh, to Zapier. So I've already done that a couple of times. Um, so I'm actually just going to choose my existing uh, Google account here. And you can see that uh, here it, it pops up with uh, being verified. But if you didn't have one, it would just ask you to um, ask you to uh, connect your Google account to it with a little pop up. It's pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And now um, I'm going to look for the spreadsheet certificate of incorporation. So if I click on spreadsheet here and then type out certificate of incorporation, you can see here's my certificate of incorporation spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and click on that. And then the worksheet it's asking for is just, if we go back over here, it's just these tabs down at the bottom. So very similar to tabs in an Excel spreadsheet, they just call these worksheets. Um, so they're basically just a, it's just a tab within the larger spreadsheet. So we only have one, uh, which is gonna be called form responses one. So we'll just select that and uh, we'll go ahead and click continue now. <clears throat> so what's important uh, to know with Zapier is when you're building these zaps or these workflows, um, what you want to have is, is test data so that you can actually test that this workflow is going to work or that it is working. So in this case, what it's, um, what it's prompting me to do is, is to test that there is a sample response uh, in this spreadsheet that I can use uh, to ultimately uh, build the rest of the workflow or the rest of the zap. So if I click test and review here, it's going to look for, again, a uh, test response which it looks like it found one, which is great because that was the, uh, that was the test uh, submission that we did uh, on the form. And you can see here's you know, Acme Inc with 123 Main Street, et cetera, which matches all of the data that's in that first submission in this spreadsheet here. And so we'll just go ahead and click continue. Great. So now we've set up our first step in the zap or the, the trigger step, which is the when this happens step. So now we move on to the do this step, which we're going to choose Woodpecker because we want to now populate a template, that certificate of incorporation template that we uh, created uh, with Woodpecker using the data that we collected via the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and type out Woodpecker. And you're gonna see Woodpecker here that says by invite only, but because you accepted the, uh, the invite, uh, it'll show up for you. And there's only one action event here and that's populate documents. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And now this is when you're gonna get prompted to um, specify your API key. So I've already um, specified mine uh, here, which is you know, Woodpecker 1.0.5, um, but I could, do a, I could easily do a new one. So if I wanted to add a new account, it's going to prompt me with a, um, a connect, your, you know, connect Woodpecker, your Woodpecker account. And this is where you would put your API key. So now that it's asking us for the API key, let's go back over into the app itself and let's navigate to the menu and we're going to go down to settings. And then here is the little API key section. So if I click on get API key, it's going to go and fetch my API key or generate one for me if, uh, if I don't have one yet. And if I just go ahead and click copy here, I can now co I've copied the API key to my clipboard and I'll just go back over to the uh, Zapier uh, account access here. I'm going to go ahead and paste the API key. I'll click yes, continue. And then once it verifies that my API key is valid, uh, what it should do is accept it and add my Woodpecker account to this list here. So you can see here's now Woodpecker 1.0.5, number two. So I'm all set. It's as easy as that to connect your Woodpecker account to Zapier. We'll go ahead and click continue. And now this is, the, uh, this is the fun part. So when we click on this documents dropdown, it's going to give us a list of all of the templates that I've created and saved to my document collection. So again, because we created that template, the certificate of incorporation, we saved it to the document collection. Now, if we click on documents here, we're gonna get a uh, list 
of every template that we've created and again saved to the document collection. This one here um, is the is the one that we just created. Um, I know because I remember the name here. So just I would type out certificate and then here's my certificate of incorporation. Now we could choose as many documents as we wanted to, right? We could populate 10 or 100 different documents at the same time um, from, from this interface here. In this case, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna do one document, but this is how you would add another one, right? You would just choose a value, click another one, do as many of them as you wanted to, um, and you could populate them um, all at the same time. Now, the other thing to notice here is the export as PDF flag. So this, uh, this will allow you to specify that the documents should be returned or exported as PDFs. Um, if it's marked as no, which is the default value, then uh, the documents are going to be exported or saved as docx files. So it's very similar to actually performing the multi-populate process within the Woodpecker app itself. Just this is obviously via Zapier and, and outside of Word. So what we're gonna do next is click on, and this is really important, is click on this refresh fields button. So what this does is basically goes and fetches a list of all of the fields that exist in all of the templates that we've specified here. So basically what it's getting and showing me here is a unique list of all of the fields that show up across all of the templates that we've selected here. Again, in this case, we just have the one, um, but if we were to select 10 or 100, uh, it would give us a unique list of all of the fields that show up across all of them so that we can now perform um, some mapping between the Google form data and these actual woodpecker fields. So firstly, if I click on company address here, I could just type out whatever I wanted if I, you know, if I wanted it to be static. Um, but in this case, what we want to do is we actually want to take data from the Google form step and we want to bring it into this company address step. So if I were to, let's see, let me just type out address here. So you can see here's company address. And that again, this is the data that was submitted to the Google form that now I can basically perform a mapping, right? I can say, take that company address data from the Google form and insert it into this company address field within the Woodpecker template. I know it's a little confusing, but basically what we're doing right now is we're just mapping the data from the Google form submission to the Woodpecker fields. And we only have to do this once. We just need to tell Zapier what data should go where. So again, here's our city. Whoops. Let's go ahead and search for city. There's company city. We'll go and do the same thing for county. Company county. Whoops. And then we'll do company name as well. There's company name. And lastly, company zip. Great. So if you remember the rest of these, this execution date, par value, and total number of shares, those are the fields that we wanted to leave blank um, because we wanted to fill them out later uh, when, when this document was finally ready to go out and after we could add on additional, uh, some additional things and clarify these things. So we're just gonna leave them blank. We don't actually have to, uh, have to do anything with them. So at this point, we'll do a continue and then it's going to ask us to, uh, to test this. So if we go and do a test and review, what should happen is it's going to send this, this test data that test submission that we performed in the, uh, the intake form here. And it's going to uh, send that, that data map to the correct fields to Woodpecker and say, please populate this certificate of incorporation for us with this data that was submitted from the Google form. And you can see that it worked. Um, it, it was, it was success, success. And what's returned is this, uh, this link to a folder containing the final document. So, um, for the woodpecker step at this point, we're all good. That worked nicely um, and we can click done editing here. So at this point, we might be, we might be ready to go, right? This is just sort of a two-step zap, but um, we want to, we actually want to get a little, a little fancier here because we want to take the documents that are generated from woodpecker and we want to store them somewhere. Now, this, this third step here could be emailing them to ourselves. It could be storing them in your DMS. It could be storing them in Google Drive. It could be anything that you can imagine. Um, obviously, in this case, we're going to do the Google Drive uh, use case here. So again, let's just uh, type out Drive and we'll see Google Drive as an option. I'm gonna select Google Drive. And then again, we're just gonna go through some of the same steps here where we've got an action event for our Google Drive app. And there's a bunch of, uh, bunch of options here um, for this one just because it's, it's pretty robust. But what we want to do is actually upload a file. 
So we're going to click on upload file. We'll do a continue. And then now again, we get to the account portion. I've already got uh, an account linked up here, but you would, if you, if you didn't have one, you would just do add new account and follow a similar path that we did when we were um, adding the, uh, the woodpecker account. So I'll click, go ahead and click continue here as well. And now it's going to ask me, okay, well, where would you like to store this, uh, this file? So I'm going to click on drive here. We'll do, let's see if I type, oh, I think I have to go in here. If I do my Google drive, the way this works is that's sort of like the top level um, folder. But if I pop in here uh, again, I should be able to do, um, oh no, actually, so sorry. That's, that's my Google drive, which is just probably gonna look the same for everyone. Then the folder is what, we, what we're really concerned with. So if I just search for Zapier, I think I actually have to go into Woodpecker. And then if I search for Zapier, there we go, Zapier demo. So I've chosen the Woodpecker folder and then the Zapier demo folder. And now I'm basically saying, okay, store this new document in the Zapier demo folder. Now here's where, Interco or, um, where uh, Zapier gets really intelligent. So anytime that there is a, uh, a field here, right? And it's got this little icon next to it indicating it's a file field. That means that you can actually pass in to this field, right? Or you can reference within this field um, a link to a file, an actual file, whatever you want. Uh, and it will be intelligent enough to actually download that file for you and then save it to Google Drive. So in this case, what we wanna do is, is if we click on the file field, we've got you know, two previous steps that we could reference. But obviously we want to reference the woodpecker step. And the only thing available from that woodpecker step is this big long uh, zip link. So if we click on that, it's going to insert uh, that zip link here in that file input. And so again, Zapier will be intelligent enough to actually download this file and upload it to Google Drive for us. So all we have to do is pass in the link. Now there's a couple of other options here where, you know, do you wanna convert this to a Google Drive document uh, or a Google Doc? And we don't wanna do that. Um, so we'll just leave that blank. And then the cool part too, is that we could specify a dynamic file name. So maybe we wanna call this certificate of incorporation. And then maybe we wanna put a, um, a date on it. So if I go to the, uh, the, new, the um, Google Form response step, there's a little timestamp field here. So if I click on it, now the name of my file is going to be Certificate of Incorporation and whatever the timestamp was of someone who submitted that form. That's it. So let's now do a, go ahead and do a continue and we'll do uh, a test because we test all of our steps here. So we'll click test and review. And what we should see uh, is that the file gets successfully up uploaded to Google Drive, which you can see that it worked nicely. So if we go over to the Zapier demo folder here, I'm just gonna refresh it so we can see. Um, you can see that here is our certificate of incorporation uh, folder with the timestamp at the end. And now we, would, uh, we could download this if we wanted to. Um, we could share a link to this. Again, we could email this to ourselves, whatever we wanted to do uh, for our specific workflow we could make happen here. But what's important to know is that we just ran a test and it looked like it's saved correctly. So that's, that's great. So uh, we're gonna do a done editing here. And so now our zap is complete. Again, if anyone has any questions about this, I know we've kind of breezed through it a little bit, please feel free to raise your hand or um, post that question in the chat and I'm happy to walk through what we just did here. Um, but basically this is, this is a simple Zapier zap uh, or a, a workflow where we have a first step followed by a second and a third step. Uh, and as soon as we turn this on, so this little uh, off on toggle in the bottom, as soon as we turn this on, now this zap or this workflow, is going to be listening for any time there's a new response in that spreadsheet. So if we were to just uh, go ahead and test this again, let's do a preview. And just so we can see this whole thing working in action, let's, uh, you know, let's say this is my test company and this is one, two, three Broadway. And maybe uh, my, let's do a different city here. Let's do a zip. And we'll do a submit. And so now what's gonna happen is that this zap will get kicked off. Um, it's going to, like I said, it listens for any submission of this form, which we've just submitted. And you can see that that data now ends up in our spreadsheet here that's storing the submission data from the form. And then, um, and then again, this is, it's gonna listen, 
It's going to pass that data to Woodpecker and then store that data in uh, Google Drive. So the um, oftentimes this workflow is not instant. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes because of the way that Zapier is architected. Sometimes it, it pulls for changes, which you know it doesn't. It pulls every couple of minutes sometimes. So this might take a minute or two. Um, but what we can do to see if if this is actually working and happening, uh, aside from you know continually refreshing over here in our Zapier demo folder. Um, is if we go over to the right here, there's a little task history button. And so uh, this will basically give us the history of all of the tasks that have run for this, uh, for this zap. So um, it, again, this is, there's nothing here yet because it, it hasn't run, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a, a minute or so. Um, and we should see a line item here as soon as it's run, as well as uh, another line item here for the newly, uh, um, newly uh, sort of drafted certificate of incorporation. While we're waiting for that, um, does anyone have any questions about, uh, about what we went through here today? I know, I know we covered a lot. Okay, and while, uh, again, while we're waiting for this to, uh, to run, I'll just quickly show you what, you know, what a final um, sort of run through of this might look like. So if I were to, you know, download this, uh, this uh, folder here, just go ahead and download it. And it should give me uh, ability to download to my downloads folder. And I'm just going to take a quick uh, peek at it so we could actually see what the final um, version of this might look like. So I'll just open up that file here. And then uh, We'll launch Woodpecker, and we should see that all of the um, all of the fields that we've specified have now been filled out with uh, with values here, except those three that we left blank. So again, at this point, we could do you know here's our total number of shares, and maybe our par value is this, and here's our you know maybe our execution date is uh, let's see what's today fifth maybe. Uh, and we'll click a populate. And then now the rest of the stuff gets filled in and uh, this is ready and set to go. So we basically automated the drafting of, you know, 90% of this document, but we can still fill in things um, at, at, the, uh, at the end. Okay, um, so the last 10 minutes are, are for any questions or clarifications you might have. Um, that was the majority of uh, everything we were gonna walk through. So again, feel free to, uh, to ask any, any uh, questions or curiosities you might have about, about Zapier or, or how we set this up or um, pretty much anything, uh, anything that we cover today. The rest, the rest of the time here is yours. And there's our, uh, there's our run of the, uh, of the Zap. And if we refresh this page here, we should see a new new line item, and there we go. So our, uh, our Zap worked successfully. So at this point, we could, uh, like I said, if we go over to the send button here, we could email this to someone, we could share a link, or even fancier, we could embed this onto our website. Good question. Um, so there's a, a question is, uh, is the API key needed only once during the initial setup? Yes, um, exactly. So actually what's, what's really cool is uh, even if you were to set up other zaps, so other workflows within Zapier, your API key is going to be saved within Zapier. So you don't have to, uh, anytime you use the Woodpecker app or the Woodpecker, you know, Woodpecker app in a step here, you don't have to enter the API key again. Um, so you really just enter it in once and then anytime you use the Woodpecker app going forward in any, any zap or any workflow, you can just select, you know, I would like to use this account that I've already specified an API key for. So yes, uh, you would just enter the API key once and, and that's it. Now, there is a quick caveat to that, which is if you were, you know, in, um, for some reason, if you felt that your API key was compromised or you wanted to switch it out for any reason, um, if we went over to settings here, Here's the get API key section. There's a little button that says generate new key. If you do generate a new key, uh, you'll get that new key here, but the old key will now become inactive. So if you were to generate a new key, you would have to um, add the key again uh, in, in Zapier for Woodpecker. But again, you would only have to do it once. 
Um, so the only time you, you really have to enter in your key is either the first time or if you were to uh, regenerate uh, the key.